Hi, I'm Chao Wei Huang from the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and Frederick Health Hospital. What do you do uh, when your stent is stripped off the balloon in the middle of a STEMI? Today, we're going to review a recent case where this happened and uh, go over a systematic approach for how to deal uh, with the situation. The patient is a 65-year-old man who uh, presented to the ED with several hours of severe chest pain. He has had exertional angina for the past several months, and the ECG showed uh, inferior ST elevations more uh, prominent in lead 2, and the uh, STEMI team was uh, activated. On cath, the uh, RCA had moderate uh, distal disease. Uh, the LED is uh, not well laid out here, but uh, there was a 70 to 80 percent stenosis in the mid LED. The uh, circumflex is shown, and the clear culprit is this complex lesion that you see in the mid circumflex. All right, so we went to work. Um, our guide was a six French EBU three and a half uh, guide catheter, and with a little bit of difficulty, we were able to uh, navigate a pro water wire uh, across the lesion into the uh, distal circumflex. Um, I reached for my uh, usual STEMI balloon, which is a uh, 2.5 by 12 millimeter, millimeter um, compliant balloon, uh, but uh, we uh, could not get it across uh, the lesion. So uh, what do you do if you're at a uh, community hospital and uh, you can't uh, get your uh, balloon to cross? Well, um, first, uh, you generally try smaller and longer balloons. Uh, longer balloons actually have a smaller crossing profile at the distal tip uh, compared to uh, shorter balloons. Uh, you wedge the balloon as much as you can into the lesion, inflate, and then gradually size up to uh, serially larger balloons. Next, uh, you can try to increase backup. Uh, the simplest way to do this is to use a guide extension catheter. Uh, I have a very low threshold uh, to reach uh, for a guide liner. Um, deep seating the guide is uh, another possibility. And uh, if there's a suitable side branch, uh, inflating an anchor balloon in the side branch will increase backup. But uh, you'll usually need to take out the guide liner to do this. And the anchor balloon, of course, uh, can sometimes injure the side branch. Um, second line strategies uh, involve either uh, improving your wire or your guide. Uh, if the lesion can be rewired, a, a buddy wire can sometimes help with getting your balloon across. Uh, using a stiffer wire or a wiggle wire often uh, helps, uh, but directly wiring a challenging lesion with these wires is uh, usually really difficult. And uh, you'll usually need to get a micro catheter across the lesion uh, to do a wire exchange. Uh, you can also try to change your guide out, uh, either uh, to a more supportive guide, uh, such as an AL, or use a larger uh, 8, 7, or 8 French system. Um, now, swapping out a guide over a coronary wire can be hard, and I find that uh, passing an uninflated balloon over that wire and passing the guide over the balloon shaft instead of the wire alone uh, can sometimes help. Um, alternatively, you can change the approach completely. Uh, a femoral approach often provides stronger backup uh, than a radial approach. Um, third line strategies uh, involve uh, plaque modification. Uh, this is where uh, you could be at a disadvantage uh, if you are at a community hospital instead of a tertiary center. Uh, because you can't uh, usually just reach for rotational atherectomy or laser or orbital atherectomy. Now, some community hospitals now actually have atherectomy devices uh, based on the latest sky recommendations for PCI without surgical backup, uh, but most uh, community hospitals uh, still do not. And more advanced wiring techniques, uh, such as the uh, dissection reentry, are really um, not recommended uh, without surgical backup. Uh, but there are other options that you can try. Um, the uh, turnpike line of microcatheters are tapered at the tip. So if you can wedge the tip of the catheter in the lesion, uh, gently torquing the microcatheter can often help um, uh, stretch and dilate the lesion. Uh, you do need to be careful not to overdo it because if the catheter doesn't move as you torque, um, you can lock the catheter onto the wire and the whole system will then have to come out, including uh, the coronary wire. Um, you can also reach for uh, microcatheters with, with a uh, stiff uh, spiral tip, such as a turnpike gold or uh, a tornus catheter. Uh, these uh, catheters can be torqued into the lesion essentially to score the surface of the lesion, and that sometimes uh, can then allow other equipment to get across. Again, don't overdo it. Uh, sometimes the catheters uh, can themselves uh, get stuck. And then um, there is a grenadoplasty, uh, which is also known as balloon-assisted microdissection, or the BAM technique. Uh, 
Um, this is a simple, cheap, um, and often uh, forgotten technique. Uh, and um, and despite its name, it's actually usually uh, quite safe. Uh, the idea is to intentionally rupture a balloon at the lesion to weaken the lesion uh, sufficiently to allow equipment to pass. And so to do this, you wedge a uh, generally small compliant balloon, uh, generally 1.5 millimeter or less, uh, into the lesion and make sure that there are no bubbles in your inflator. Uh, you inflate the balloon uh, very, uh, to very high pressures and generally more than 30 atmospheres and intentionally rupture the balloon. Uh, balloon rupture is much more easily seen as a sudden drop in the pressure in your endoflator uh, than, uh, be, uh, than being able to see it on fluoroscopy. So as soon as you see a rapid pressure drop on your endoflator dial, you want to quickly draw vacuum in the endoflator to aspirate uh, any debris. Uh, sometimes you'll need to rupture several balloons uh, to weaken the lesion uh, sufficiently. All right, so um, we uh, followed the algorithm and uh, got a guy liner uh, uh, in there uh, to uh, increase our backup. Uh, we chose a smaller and longer balloon, uh, in our case, a, a 2O by 20 millimeter uh, compliant balloon. And with a little bit of a push, uh, we were able to get the balloon to cross. And you can see that the vessel has a bit of a kink in there, and uh, that probably prevented uh, the uh, larger 2.5 balloon uh, from crossing initially. Uh, we then did serial dilutions uh, with 2.25 and then with 2.5 millimeter, millimeter balloons uh, to size up the lesion and uh, prepare it uh, for the stent. And so here we are after POBA. Uh, the lesion uh, definitely looked better, but it does look like there is a corkscrew or tortuosity uh, with a uh, focal recalcitrant spot uh, right in the middle of the lesion. And so we, uh, at this point, attempted to pass a 3.5 by 38 millimeter balloon uh, uh, stent, I mean, uh, but the stent uh, could not cross. Uh, we stretched the lesion more uh, using 2.5 and 3.0 NC balloons, uh, which we took up to uh, pretty high pressures. But still, we uh, could not get the uh, 3.5 by 38 millimeter stent to cross. So we tried a smaller stent, a 3.0 by 15 millimeter DES, and that one could not cross either. Um, the stent simply could not negotiate that corkscrew uh, in the middle of the lesion. So uh, what next? So my, my plan was to swap out the, guy, uh, the uh, pro water wire to a wiggle wire. Uh, the wiggle will uh, provide more support and the wiggles within the wiggle wire will allow us to direct the tip of the stent in different directions, and that will allow us to better negotiate the tortuosity of the lesion. And so um, this is when things uh, went really wrong. As we tried to uh, retrieve the no-cross stent, it, it appeared to be stuck in the lesion. Uh, we pulled a little harder, and uh, to our great dismay, we saw that only the balloon came back the undeployed stent was still in the lesion and was uh, completely stripped off of the balloon. What the heck do we do now? <clears throat> All right, so in this situation, the first thing you need to do is ask yourself if your stent is still on the wire. If the answer is yes, then ask yourself whether you can just deploy the stent where it is. If the answer is also yes, in other words, if your stent is still in a reasonable position and you can get a balloon to cross, then the solution is just to deploy the stent. If your stent is not on the wire, then ask yourself whether you can crush the stent in place. If the answer is yes, then pass a parallel wire, ideally adjacent to the stent, and crush it with a second stent. Passing the wire could be quite tricky, though, especially if the stent is mangled or oriented uh, in a funny way. Your wire might go through the stent struts, but that's actually okay. If that happens, you'll have to dilate the stent cell with a balloon before being able to pass your second stent to crush. What if you can't uh, deploy the stent or crush the stent? Uh, this could happen if your wire, balloon, or equipment uh, can't cross the stent, or if the stent is badly mangled, or if the stent protrudes a lot into the aorta. Or it could be a location issue. You might not want to deploy the stent or crush it in the left main um, or at a major bifurcation or in a small branch. When Well, then the next question is to ask yourself whether you can just leave the stent alone.
So if your stent is in a small side branch or very far distal, uh, it might be reasonable to just leave it alone and admit the patient to the ICU to get through a uh, controlled infarct. Now, um, if your stent is in a major epicardial vessel, uh, then you can't just leave it alone. If you can't deploy it or crush it, um, then you'll have to retrieve it. Uh, this is usually really hard to do, uh, but there are a few techniques to be aware of. I have another video on stent dislodgement in which I go over how to do these techniques in detail. Uh, but the easiest technique uh, to retrieve a stent uh, is the small balloon technique. Uh, if you still have wire access and can get a small balloon across the stent, then inflate it distal to the stent and you'll be able to pull the balloon and stent back into your guide as one unit. Another technique is the guide pinning technique. Um, this is useful if your stent is close to the ostium. In this technique, try to sheath part of the stent uh, into your guide or guide liner, then inflate a balloon in the guide next to the stent. Uh, this pins the stent against the wall of the guide and you'll be able to pull everything out. Uh, if your stent is protruding into the aorta, uh, snaring, uh, usually with a gooseneck, uh, might uh, be a good option. And if your stent is far down the vessel, uh, you might try the wire twirling technique to pull it more upstream. In this technique, uh, you pass multiple wires, uh, generally three or four, uh, through, the, uh, through the stent and twirl them all, all, all together. Once the stent is entangled with the wires, pull everything back. And finally, if uh, retrieval is unsuccessful, uh, you'll need to call for surgical removal. All right, so in our case, we first ask ourselves, is the stent still on the wire? Well, yes, it is. Next, uh, we ask ourselves, can we deploy the stent? So we tried to get a 3O by 50 millimeter balloon into the stent to deploy, uh, but uh, the balloon would not go. A 2.5 by 15 millimeter balloon made it perhaps a quarter to halfway into the stent, but uh, could not cross all the way. So therefore, no, uh, we uh, could not uh, deploy the stent. Okay, so um, can we leave the stent alone? Well, no, uh, an undeployed stent in the middle of a large circumflex will almost certainly thrombose and cause a big infarct. Uh, so based on our algorithm, we're really left with just trying to retrieve the stent. So um, the first thing we tried was a snare. Uh, our stent was still on the wire and we already had a guideliner in place. Uh, we could simply slide uh, the loop of a gooseneck up the wire and around the stent and then advance the guideliner to capture it and pull the whole thing out. Unfortunately, this didn't work. Uh, the snare captured the stent, uh, but uh, we were unable uh, to pull it out. So uh, we then decided to try the small balloon technique but uh, this didn't work either. The smallest balloon we had was a 1.5 by 6 millimeter balloon. We tried to advance this balloon beyond the stent, but it only made it about a quarter of the way into the stent uh, before uh, getting stuck. Uh, next, we tried to sheath the stent with the guide liner and hope to pin its tip against the wall of the guide liner uh, with the 1.5 millimeter balloon that we already had. And unfortunately, uh, this uh, didn't work either. Uh, the guide liner could not be made to go around the stent. And as we were pushing the guide liner forward, it actually seemed to wedge the stent further into the lesion. So uh, what do we do now? Uh, we were uh, quickly running out of options. All right, so, so picture the scene. Uh, we are at a community hospital cath lab with beeping medical equipment. Patient on the table was groaning, the attending and fellow sweating it out the table in the middle of a jumble of discarded wires and balloons and staring intently at the monitor. The circulator was scurrying about the monitor tech reminding you for the 10th time about recurring bursts of VT. And that has been 30 minutes since the last ACT. So after a while, the attending now says, um, get the balloon pump ready and call surgery. The fellow then says, well, it looks pretty wedged in there right now. I think we should try pushing another balloon in there again and deploy the stent. The attending uh, looks at the fellow incredulously and growls, what makes you think we'll get a balloon across now? We only got it halfway into the stent before, and if we just inflate the proximal half of the stent, the whole thing is going to go down. Um, to which the fellow quickly replies, well, if we leave it like that, it's going to go down as well. The attending was visibly taken aback and stammers, well, I... Um, the fellow then continues, and what's there to lose? We're already calling surgery anyway. 
So the attending stopped and considers for a bit. Then he grudgingly turns to the circulator. All right, get me that two five by 12 millimeter balloon. So uh, we got the two five by 12 millimeter balloon and pushed as hard as we could with the guide liner in place. Um, you see the guide backing out here. The balloon uh, made it about two thirds of the way through the stent and we inflated it at 14 atmospheres. And um, with the proximal two thirds of the stent expanded and a little bit of elbow grease, we were then able to get a fresh 3.0 by 15 millimeter balloon across the remainder of the stent. And we took that balloon up to 14 atmospheres as well. The fellow was right. So here's what things looked like after initial stent deployment. Uh, we next did uh, post dilation with a 3.0 by 15 millimeter NC balloon and took that up to 18 atmospheres. After that, we uh, passed and deployed an overlapping 3.0 by 30 millimeter DES fairly easily. The fellow was visibly feeling pretty good about himself at this point. We did more high pressure uh, post dilation with 3.0 and 3.5 uh, NC balloons. And we got a, a very good final angiographic result, especially uh, considering the alternative. Um, the patient was admitted to the CCU and did well. Uh, he returned a couple of days later for stage PCI of the mid LED and was discharged home after an uneventful hospital stay. All right, take home messages. Um, a stent becoming stripped off a balloon is never pleasant. Uh, we went over a simplified approach for how to handle the situation. In brief, uh, if the stent is still on the wire, uh, deploy the stent. Uh, if it's not on the wire, crush the stent. If you can't deploy or crush the stent for any reason, see if you can leave it alone. If you cannot leave it alone, try to retrieve the stent. If that can't be done, uh, you need to call for surgical removal. And finally, uh, remember to listen to your staff and to your fellows. Uh, never be too proud. They often have good ideas. Thank you for watching.